Welcome to the Political Vigilante, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood. I'm joined from the Convo Couch, Fiorella, and uh, from Get Your News On with Ron and the Jimmy Dore program, Ron Placone, everybody. Um, What's up, guys? What's up, everybody? Thank you for watching the show. Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, So our friend Tulsi Gabbard did something (laughs) that I, in fact, love. (laughs) Tulsi Gabbard's statement on defamation lawsuit against Hillary Clinton. I'll read it for everybody. I love our country. That's why I made the decision to enlist in the Army and National Guard after the attack on our country on 9-11. Hillary's never served. Neither Mm -hmm. is Bill. Neither is Chelsea. I served as a soldier now for 17 years. Still a major in the in the National Guard, uh, in the Reserves, rather. I put my life on the line for our country, volunteering and deployed twice to the Middle East, and I've served in Congress for over seven years on the Foreign Affairs, Armed Services, and Homeland Security Committees. I have dedicated my entire adult life to protecting the safety, security, and freedom of the American people. Despite my lifetime of service to our country, Hillary Clinton has essentially tried to portray me as a traitor to our country. If Hillary Clinton and her allies can successfully destroy my reputation, even though I'm a war veteran and a sitting member of Congress, then they can do it to anybody, which is a fantastic point that Tulsi is making. We all said that when Hillary called her a Russian asset, you're like, really? You're saying a sitting member of Congress and a major in the army is taking orders from Russia? That's a serious accusation. Because if that's true, we need to do a thorough investigation. If members of Congress and majors in the army are taking orders from Putin, (laughs) we need to know this. Right? Uh, Former Secretary of State, not just some wingnut on TV, a former Secretary of State who got security briefings every goddamn day. Yeah, She knows what's up. It's just so amazing. It's like, what does she think happens like like does she think like tulsi's just sitting eating her breakfast and all of a sudden it's like tulsi look under the sink (laughs) i have a message for you person you humiliate this week is pete Buttigieg. (laughs) that will be plan number one Come back next week for plan two. Oh, she just gets one of those Russian dolls and opens it up, and there's just new intel in each one of the little dolls. Leave some pineapple under the sink for me. It's good here. Like, what do you think happened? Like, it was just the most insane nonsense that Hillary Clinton was spewing. Well, let's go back more to this. In fact, that's exactly the message Hillary and her powerful lead friends want to send you. Hillary Clinton and her allies want you to know that if you dare cross them, they will destroy your reputation as well, which is absolutely true. Now, we know that they, anyone new to this is a history. Uh, when they screwed Bernie in 2016, uh, Tulsi was the vice chair of the DNC, and she stepped down and said no and backed. And that was like, uh-oh, you crossed to Clinton. So they've been trying to get at her. They've, they've pushed through mainly MSNBC and CNN, the Assad apologist, Mm -hmm. when Tulsi said, why are we doing regime change wars? So a combat veteran that was in a medical unit that saw the worst part of war. I I, I was over there as a comedian and I went into some medical tents and saw wounded. So I sat in on a surgery and it's in my movie, Afghanistan. It's horrifying. And I just saw a glimpse of it and it was horrifying. I can't imagine what a goddamn medical unit saw on a daily basis while this rich white lady is filling her bullshit foundation with arms deals. Mm -hmm. So that already is offensive. Um, And that's that's why she's like, why are we going to war? Hillary Clinton profits from war? As do all of her Republican and defense contractor friends. Hillary Clinton is a pro-choice Republican at best. Right? Yeah, at best. At, at best. best. At a, best. She doesn't even pick pro-choice Republicans <laughs> right. as her running mates. No. Um, so I will not allow, Tulsi says, I will not allow this blatant effort to intimidate me or other patriotic Americans into silence go unchallenged. This is why I filed a lawsuit against Hillary Clinton. I ask you to stand with me working side by side to ensure we have a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Together, we will usher in a new era of fresh leadership with peace, freedom, and opportunity for all. I'll just say this. I've never been a big fan of lawsuits. I'm, I don't like that. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you. But this is awesome. <laughs> so what are your guys' thoughts? Everybody loves to complain about how horrible Hillary Clinton is and how she is, you know, this this leader in the Democratic Party, how she manipulates everything behind closed doors. But nobody has had the audacity to go after her in the way Tulsi Gabbard did. And that was all brought up by Hillary. Hillary chose to call her a a Russian asset. So she responded via the tweet that went entirely viral. 
and got people to be like, whoa, she's going after the DNC. She's flat out mentioning the establishment because she doesn't just mention Hillary Clinton. She also mentions her, yeah, the elites, yeah. like the, the her people, her her minions. Like she doesn't say minions, but she says like her people. Um, and so by doing this, she's setting a precedent that's like, look, you guys, she can go after me. I have a platform. I'm a Congresswoman. I'm a veteran. She's going to go after everybody and we need to stop being bullied because nobody has stood up to the Clintons. They're no. like pe people joke about it. They're like, oh, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get suicided. You're going to get Epstein, <laughs> yeah, Clinton, whatever it is. So to me, this is a huge deal. This is being this is not even people. I don't think people are seeing how big of a deal this is. And I applaud her to do that because while Bernie is playing nice and above the fray, she is going out there and attacking these people that are Hillary Sir gets like Kamala Harris and, yeah. and Pete Buttigieg and the Democratic establishment. And now look who's left in the field. Right. And I think that helps pro the progressive movement. No, we've talked about this before. It, it, the last two debates, it, it, it was miss, missed having yeah. Tulsi on the stage yeah. right. to fight alongside of Bernie and stuff like that. So, Ron, what do you what do you think of this? Oh, I'm I'm I agree with everything that was said. Absolutely. And, and I hope that she gets a huge fat check from Hillary Clinton. I would love to see that happen. Um, the reality of the situation, too, though, it's not going to be an easy case to win. Right. It's going to be tough. That's just the reality of it. To prove defamation for a public figure, you have to prove, you know, negligence in it, where it's like, well, this person didn't do their due diligence and they spouted this thing off that hurt this person's reputation. Uh, you also have to prove malicious intent, which um, it's certainly not. I don't think it's impossible. I'm sure it's not. But uh, it's not going to be super easy, and Hillary will be able to uh, be able to hide behind the fact that she didn't mention Tulsi by name. Some people are saying like that's not a factor. It's like yeah, they're going to try to work with that though, and Tulsi's legal team needs to be prepared as to how they're going to refute that. Her spokesperson though did right. Did confirm well, but that I'm just it was, saying they, they need still, to refute that. Yeah, I mean, but still they'll, they'll be able to be like, well, we didn't say it, blah blah blah. So yeah. it's like yeah. I'm just saying they need to be prepared. I'm not saying it's not winnable. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know, but but it's certainly not going to be easy. That's right. what everyone's I, saying. I, I agree with you from a legal standpoint, but to me, the win or loss is irrelevant because it's her just calling exactly. it out. That's what it is. Like when she called Hillary the the, the queen of warmongers. That was like, I was like, I remember I stood up in my apartment when I read that on my <laughs> yeah. phone. I was like, does she, she's not saying that's not true. That Hillary, she went, what? Like, this is Tulsi. Like, I'm in the military. I've been shot at. I'm in a, you know, the military is a boys club. I had to listen to all kinds of crap. I can do more push-ups than you. Like, uh, <laughs> I know else? how to shoot a weapon. So why don't you pipe down? So I, what I think this is going to do is either way, She's going, just going head to head with the Clintons is, is fantastic. And this is why Bernie picking her as his VP, you want to, you want to win some red states? Right. You just did it. Oh, you agree. just, you just won at least a, a, a dozen red states with that move right there. And it's like somebody finally calling the Clintons on their bullshit. Yeah. Bernie won't even. Mm. Yeah. Like, so it's, so I think just calling her on it and the thing, what it'll do you just gave Tulsi's going to get a bunch of press on this. Yeah, and no, you get I, to back the Clintons into a corner. I, I I think that is a great point, and and I don't necessarily like I don't disagree with that. But I do think that like you know this is it, this is in the cycle right now. It's it's going to be a helpful thing, and and she is calling it out, which is awesome. Uh, however, if she pulls a W out of this. That's going to amplify oh, that's it yeah. by, by, by a lot. Yes. So, so yes, I think that's a great point. I don't disagree with it, but I, I think it's like, let's try for the W2. No, though. I, I agree. And, I and, wanted you know, to win. And, and, uh, yeah, I really wanted to win. So it's like, yeah, let, let's recognize the fact it's going to be hard. It's not unattainable or a lawyer wouldn't have been touching it in the first yeah. place. So, but, but I'm hoping she pulls a victory here. Here's a quick little online poll with Stan with Tulsi. 23,000 volts, 80% support Tulsi's Gabbard's decision to sue Hillary Clinton for defamation over her Russian asset comments, right? And this is it for years. Just to show you who Tulsi Gabbard is, I want to talk about she's the only candidate in the field that has spoken up for Julian Assange saying he yep. needs to be pardoned. Yep. So when this happened to Glenn Greenwald uh, two days ago, 
or, or yesterday really, for years, Greenwald has exposed abuses at the highest levels of government and his investigative journalism deserves our support. If we allow the powerful to silence such journalists, our democracy and freedom is in peril. I stand with Greenwald. Why this is significant is, look, WikiLeaks and the Podesta emails showed the, the corruption of Hillary and the Democratic Party, and all Hillary has said is Russia, 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 Russia. So then she tie, tried to tie Tulsi to Russia. What Tulsi Gabbard is saying, this is the powerful elites, which are the Clintons, want to silence anyone that calls out their lies and their mm -hmm. crimes, which is so significant. So I think this lawsuit... Yes, if she wins, and I hope they do whatever they can. I hope her legal team, and they're going up against the Clintons, who are just decade-long liar weasels. They're a machine. And, yeah. and they're not even like good litigators. No, they're going to threaten people. They're going to, you know, one of Tulsi's lawyers might slip and fall on a bag mm -hmm. of knives. You know what I mean? Like, this is how the Clintons fucking operate. They're fucking evil. They're awful, evil people, right? That's why they were, uh, they've been to Jeffrey Epstein's compound and all that. I'm gonna get to that in a second. But I think what this is, this is, this is, this fight is gonna open up a bigger, look at how awful, because who's ever called Hillary a bully? Who's ever called her a bully? A bully. She is a bully. Hillary plays the sexist card. If a man goes up, oh, she plays that card. Another woman, a woman of color that's a veteran, is calling Hillary a bully. That is significant. We don't call, our society doesn't call women bullies enough. Right. <laughs> yeah. should. Well, women like Hillary. Uh, but yeah, right. look, it's, it's, it's powerful too because it's uniting progressives. You know, the smears did work for a while and a lot of even progressives were, were you know, at attacking Tulsi. But now what I've seen online and on Twitter, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I've seen the Bernie Kratz and the Tulsi Kratz be like, hey, this is yes. awesome. Yeah. Like, let's, because she did this after Hillary got caught uh, trying to smear Bernie and agreeing with Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren went on trying to smear Bernie. And then there was Joe Biden. And so all of these people and progressives are like, who has stood by Bernie's side every single time and defended him, even back in 2016 till now? That's Tulsi Gabbard, and so people are seeing that. And so attacking Hillary, where he isn't going there, and he can't in a way, right. uh, is pretty much the, it's it, it's it's perfect. It this is. is how it should be. You're right, because if Bernie attacks Hillary, he's a sexist, he's a sore loser, he's yeah. a blah, blah, yeah. blah, all that crap comes out. What are you, what are you gonna call Tulsi Gabbard, a sexist? Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, a racist? I was, yeah, a racist, exactly. She hates rich white women. <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine, and it, it was funny, we had lunch together, and and we were, you know, just talking politics and we, we were talking about like Bernie and stuff like that. And then we, we were just going through all the issues. And, and when Tulsi came up, you know, uh, my friend was like, I'm not not a Tulsi fan. I was like, well, there's a lot of things I like about her. Here's what they are and blah, blah, blah. And we, and we kind of talked about it. And then when this hit the news, that friend texted me a screenshot of the headline and was like, you know, I'm starting to come around to her. <laughs> I wasn't sure about yeah. her, but the thing she said, I, I, in, in, in this, I'm starting to come around. Some great yeah. things have happened the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Warren doing that was actually a good thing because up to that point, it was Bernie and Warren are the progressives. Yeah. No, no, they're not. This show, no, Warren's a liar. People on CNN and MSNBC are saying she's not honest. I saw a CNN report, an MSNBC reporter, say Bernie. And there's a lot to lot to be that he's offensive, that calling Bernie offensive. But Warren hasn't been honest about everything. Oh, Michael Her Moore's heritage. podcast is uh, Jimmy actually recommended it to me, and that's why I listened to it because Jimmy was like, "You got to listen to that." So I listened to it. And yeah, if you guys haven't, listen to Michael Moore's podcast about Liz Warren. Yeah. It's incredible. I mean, and, and the way he does it is so perfect because he's not trying to pretend like he's just some outsider. You know, like, like he acknowledges, he's like, I work with these people now. I collaborate with them. That's the circle I'm in now. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like he acknowledges that and he s tells his story from his perspective where it's like, I kept giving this person all these little benefits of the doubt yeah where she wasn't totally honest about what her dad did she wasn't totally honest about her heritage she wasn't honest and, and he goes down the list and he's like oh man the wool was over my eyes it, it's a, it's a 
beautiful awesome. podcast. It's great. He it's admits a beautiful it. podcast because he was a huge proponent of, of Warren yeah. for the longest. Yeah, time. and 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 now no, he endorsed Bernie and he talks about that. He's like, you know, I was for Bernie and here's why I'm for Bernie and and he really feels great about his choice now because he it's it's a perfect yeah. podcast this, about look, that topic. Look, it's like what happened in October. When when Hillary called Tulsi a Russian asset, that was a gift because then Tulsi called her a warmonger and got two weeks of free ads. Mm -hmm. She got all these interviews. Then AOC backs Bernie, which is another slam dunk in your identity politic face. Mm -hmm. And so now this, Hillary can't help herself. She can't help herself. She is a, just a sociopath. She can't. She's a narcissist. She cannot handle the fact that either a woman or Bernie Sanders could be president. Another woman could be the first woman president. Yeah. She can't handle that. And she unintentionally helps all these she things. Does. I know. Look, look, I, I don't want to start a conspiracy theory, but I mentioned this on Get Your News on with Ron. It's worth repeating. We've never seen Andy Kaufman and Hillary Clinton in the same room. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. We've never seen them in the same room. At first I thought, well, maybe it's Trump. Nah, that'd be too obvious. That'd be too obvious. Well, so this is a gift because now... Warren doing that shows, no, Bernie and Warren are not the same. Bernie, the thing about people like, oh, I don't know about Bernie's policies, he's too old and this and that, but you ask all of them, is he honest? They go, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a straight shooter. I was, I was talking with someone who's like, well, maybe Mayor Pete, and they're, they're, you know, they're an Obama neoliberal friend of mine. And they, at the end of the, the debate, talking to them, they went, I'll give you this, Bernie's uncorruptible. And that, that I give him credit for. And I was like, and now this happens, right? So now... Hillary says that nobody likes Bernie, which just ex blew up in her face. Yeah. All these endorsements, uh, you uh, know, uh, Tulsi uh, Gabbard, uh, all these, all these women, all these endorsements, and now this, yeah. this is actually what's like. And Bernie needs to show a little public love to Tulsi. He needs yeah. to say something like Tulsi's, like give some like she might be my VP something. He needs to do that because this she keeps getting his back time and time again, and then Hillary did this then she backpedaled yes. i thought everyone wanted my authentic unvarnished views but to be serious the number one priority is this world of support that's you backpedaling because you said in an interview you'd back trump over bernie that's what happened yeah. so i just happened to tweet a question um <laughs> can you authentically tell us why you flew on epstein's plane two times bill 26 stayed at his compound in new mexico and had jeline maxwell attend your daughter's wedding two years after she settled out of court for being a pedophile sex trafficker and then Graham got reported as a Russian. As a Russian. Now, only 2,700 people have liked it, and it's only had 606 retweets, <laughs> which is a pretty big numbers for me. But yeah. just to be clear, you know, when Hillary, I know she's a, she's a proud feminist. That's why she had a pedophile sex trafficker at her daughter's wedding. There's Jeline Maxwell, who Virginia Roberts, in a sworn deposition, I want to make this clear, Virginia Roberts... Uh, who's now in Virginia Roberts, Jufri or whatever, however you pronounce her married name. She didn't say this in an interview. She didn't say this on social media. She said in a sworn deposition, which means under penalty of perjury, you have to tell the truth. And she said that Jeline Maxwell raped her and trafficked her. Two women made that accusation. And Jeline Maxwell settled out of court. Now, I don't know about you or any of our viewers, but if someone accused me of something I did not do, I would not settle out of court, especially if I was rich and powerful. I'd go, uh-uh, what'd you accuse me of? We're going to court. Guilty people that are rich and want a problem about their awful behavior to go away, settle out of court. Yep. Mm -hmm. And let's also not forget this. Hillary Clinton defends Harvey Weinstein accusation. How could yeah. we have known? I love it when she <laughs> does this. Oh, man. She's so strong, and I've been fighting in a boys club, and then she goes, oh, golly gee, I'm just a girl. I didn't know. I didn't know my husband was raping girls on Lipstein's plane 26 times. I didn't know. When all these women who accused Bill Clinton in the 80s, mm -hmm. who was the attorney that went after those women? Oh, it was her. So, like, wake up. If you're a feminist, good. This is your hero? I don't, I, I, I don't under, I, it's like if, you, if you're a foodie and Jeffrey Dahmer's your hero. I don't know. <laughs> oh my God, write down that joke. Dude, that's write down a that, funny joke. Okay, I gotta put that joke yeah, in my you gotta, Remind me, remind you me. You gotta, yeah, that's a joke. That's remind a good me. joke. Remind me, Taylor, if you're still watching this, remind Taylor, me. Taylor, write down that write joke. Write down that joke. Aaron, write Text down that joke. That's going in my act. You gotta try that, that on Saturday. I'm gonna do that Saturday night. In Progressive Santa comedy tour. <laughs> These are the types of jokes.
<laughs> that you will hear Ron and I jokes that will never be able to go on network TV ever, ever, in the history of ever. <laughs> I hope not. That you will only hear on Progressive. One of the things with the Progressive sidebar, since that joke was so fucking awesome, I just popped into my mind. Oh, it was beautiful. It's like when a ball just comes right across the plate and you just get it with the bat and you just know it's a home run as it's leaving the bat. Never played baseball, not since I was 12. But anyway, my point is, <laughs> Progressive Comedy Tour, this is the thing Ron and I are making, we've talked about this, an active point in 2020 of more when we come up with jokes like this on panel or in conversation or on Twitter, they're going in the act. So if you, even if you've seen us before, there's going to be a bunch of stuff you haven't seen before, and it's going to be even more political than it was anyway. That's oh, yeah. It's to to totally new sets for 2020. So. 22, 20, you, you know. know. Um, but like, how could we have known? I know, like, how could you have known Kissinger helped escalate <laughs> the war in Vietnam? Like, how could you, how could you have known oh, that God. the kingdom of Saudi Arabia was murdering? How could you have known when you helped the Secretary of State Obama start the war in Yemen? How could you have known? You know, speaking of the, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot today about the joy of like when videos get reshared. There's a video that's been reshared recently of Harvey Weinstein calling Bernie Sanders a sexist. Oh my God! Oh, no wow. way! I haven't yeah. seen that. In 2016, Harvey Weinstein calls Bernie Sanders. <laughs> wow! Because it was it was like a big Hillary thing that he did, and he said Bernie Sanders is sexist. Oh my and that's God! Just like, hmm, this aged well. This aged <laughs> really well. Mm. Harvey Weinstein, who God, whose campaign did he donate to? Oh, that's right, Hillary's campaign. That's how right. How could she have known? Mm -hmm. when, how could she have known? How could she have known? How? You want your Courtney husband? Love knew. Oh, Courtney Love knew. She said, "Stay away from Jeffrey Epstein." She said that years ago. Everyone in Hollywood knew. Wow. Hillary Clinton. But how Hillary could any anyone yeah. have known? She couldn't have talk known. to anyone who's who wrote in Hollywood in the nineties. Yeah. And they I all guess, knew Harvey Weinstein was up to crazy, her, crazy stuff. Her brand of fem feminism has fallen entirely apart. Like, I went to the Women's March just to kind of see what was going on, and it has gotten so much smaller. There's not that many people in attendance, and people who were wearing Bernie shirts were being cheered. They were like, oh, thank you for being here. So Hillary's brand of like, oh, I'm, I'm a nasty gal, I'm, I'm a representative of that, is completely tarnished because of her inconsistency. Because right. of her hypocrisy regarding especially Weinstein. I mean, her her relationships with these people who have, I think it's um, uh, Podesta's brother is some, some sort of artist. And you mentioned Dahmer. He collects weird paintings. I don't know if you've ever looked it up, but it's really disturbing. Like sculptures and paintings of half children, half demon. And oftentimes these children are like demonic. But he has a sculpture of the Dahmer, uh, the body that was found that was like stitched together with the skin of people this this guy was a huge oh. lobbyist to clinton oh, these right. types of people i know this <laughs> really? is like it's like a real I thing heard about this. it's a real thing it's so it's the weirdest thing but what i'm saying is like hillary clinton has you know this circle of people that are just disgusting and corrupt i mean we could spend hours going on we could go down the just talk about haiti yeah. and the clinton foundation in haiti that's a one hour video like i'm just unpacking that it's unbelievable and that that, that people like it's time and, and i think honestly like everyone's finally uh, finally waking up